Hello everyone and welcome to the final episode of this Archicad rendering tutorials. My name is Namara Alan. So previously we finished the modeling this thing and we want to now export it to twin motion for rendering. The first thing that we want to do is save because um, when you are exporting for render you must first save or otherwise the live sync will not work. So just like any other program in Archicad, you save by going to file, save as, and you the dialog box will come and you start looking for where to put your thing. Put the name and say okay. So now that it is saved, so you want to go to twin motion and go to to settings before we can directly link. So when we open settings, uh, I need you to change a few things here. Uh, make sure that your option here is on no merge as opposed to buy material. What that means is that if you export with the material, this door and this window which has the same material will be read as one thing. But when you use no merge, this will be a different object from this one. So make sure that you have no merge, then this will use twin motions, those ones have them checked. And then also uncheck this which says exclude objects smaller than 50. And the rest is okay. So now let's uh, live sync. So go to twin motion and click on direct link and click on new object, new project. And then you wait for it to load. So now it is here. So when it has come, we want to, obviously their ground level is above ours. So we need to take this up. So get this gizmo and push it down and as long as it disappears from there, now that is quite good. So the first thing that we want to do is we go to the urban settings. So the urban settings, so we change the background because uh, my project is not going to, it's going to be out of place. So I like it to be in the countryside. You can choose the context that you like. And then go to settings here. I like to tweak the localization. Uh, and the way you use this is that you really want to be like, you know how in photography they set their scenes, you, you have a light that is behind the camera. So make sure that as you tweak your sun direction, that the sun appears to be behind you such that it can light the subject so well. So when you have it ready, you can also tweak the weather. You adjust this slider to something that you like. You can see that these even have a rain simulator, but I like it to be before the clouds become thick. Now we also want to adjust, to adjust this. Lighting, so the lighting, here you can adjust the intensity of the sun, don't be overkill with it, just keep it lower than 1.5 is good. And then the ambience, you can make it a little bit more ambient. And then the white balance, when I take this all the way up, you can see how warm it becomes. When I take it down, you can see how cooler it becomes. So uh, because of the color preset that I have used here, uh, something warm is really good. So let's uh, increase this to close to 9000 Kelvin. So we also want to include some global illumination such that when you, I take it all the way up, you can see the interiors become more lit. And for us to see it well, I can go to first increase the quality here. Let's use uh, a higher preset. So now if I increase this, you can see how much uh, lightened they become. But right now I like to keep it low, just lower than like two is enough. And then also 
uh for us to adjust the shadows let's uh select that and press f to go in so the shadow when i go and increase it to maximum you can see how this disappears and the way i think of it is like the way you have different lights within a stadium where the light comes from here and this from here so this uh shadow thing increases the light from the sun it increases the radius of the sun such that you have minimal shadows but when you take this down you can see if i take it all the way down you can see how sharper the shadows become so i want to look at their default and take it a little bit up so because the sun is a bit you know it's a bit uh, smoother now we can also increase some ambient occlusion when i fin when i increase it you can see what happens to those corners take it all the way down you can see how they become washed out so something ab just above what is given is good so once we are happy with that we can begin to put in some objects so let's begin with the cars so it's easy you have to just click on one of the arrows up there and then we get cars and put them let's put a sedan here and maybe we was we also want a what some other car let's serve here so let's uh you rotate it into place and that looks good you can move it around so we are done with the cars so from the reference if you look at the reference we also have this human character so they, let's put someone here seated and you 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 want to use uh, the navigation such that w goes in front and then s goes backward d like that so w a s d so any of you who has played games can navigate easily in this interface quite easy one so when you right drag you can view along let's add the human character here so go ahead and go to characters humans and what we have there is this lady here so now we can orient her make sure that you make her enjoy a sitting and we can choose in the options any that you like so this is what we had used sitting position three and we take her back you so you, you can navigate and see how that looks and in order to reduce the speed so you don't clip through make sure you use the feet when you go to speed here so right about now i can go back sideways and just take this back yeah i think that is good so now that that's acceptable we can also add in plants so let's uh have a a plant here go to vegetation and we used something close to like a common fan together with an elephant ear so just place it in just reduce the scale place it in reduce the scale place in reduce the scale let's go sideways Place in, reduce the scale. Place it in, reduce the scale. Mm. And and you can see if you select those two items, they are alternated uh, randomly. So we can place the final one here. Okay let's also place them behind there so we can go through here and just pick pick them make sure that both are selected can choose two options so 
wherever you like to have them. Something like that should be good. Just to give you an idea of how quick you can actually place these these materials. So you, you get the idea. So once you have done with we are done with your vegetation you can also add in grass so when you go to vegetation you can uh, select this and make sure to reduce the radius to something like five or if that's to be given two meters and you can see how you can add in grass just click and move around but for now if you feel like your pc is not powerful enough to handle it just keep it you you the the default coloring is is is, is good to give you an illusion of grass so now that we are done with the objects and uh, maybe behind we can put some group of people that's Let's put like characters, groups, and just maybe one group is enough. Family. We can have a family there. Okay. We need to begin on texturing. You can pick like a material here wood we would like to replace that wood with what is existing here just zoom through look and i think this looks good place it in and it's probably too too reflective maybe something below 50 maybe 40 percent and then increase the scale so uh, as usual it's press f and then just go around just a little bit back and observe the scale. I think one something above one, one point something is good. And then also now we put in some wall material. Just scan through. I think this looks good. Put it in, reduce the reflection and increase the scale. And for us to see it better, we can actually reduce, make the, the color a bit grayish because in the reference, it's a bit more gray. Yeah, something like that. So let's go ahead. And I think that gray is good. And that scale is 0.6 is good. And then we also want to keep this uh, Archicad stucco red. So let's in reduce the reflection, something below 50. And yeah, the scale is good. We also need to put in the glass. Ah, oh, maybe something reflective. And a dark tint is usually good. A dark tint to that glass. And then also the metal. Brushed aluminium. Uh, you, you you want it to be very reflective because it's a metal. Uh, something above eighty, and then also uh, the scale. The scale doesn't matter that much. Uh, but then I like to paint it also a color. So let's let's take the black one according to the reference, and we can also actually use this same. Uh, material for our boundary wall spikes there that looks good and also our boundary wall we need to give it a color from the wall material uh, something vertical is good so let's reduce its reflectivity and increase the scale don't go overboard with it but something like uh, one point something or even below one yeah it looks right you just need to get a scale that looks right so let's also pick 
the glossy white it must be yeah it is very reflective you want it to be low reflective something like 40 percent should be good enough and now also we have the walkways so walkways we can choose from the concrete option maybe these walkways we can give them a concrete we can even make it a bit darker and then also yeah that scale is good looks right and then we also want to give another material for the flooring of our main house so when you zoom in uh you can it's concrete so make sure to keep uh, reflection solo even less than so it's important that you zoom in and increase the scale accordingly because the last thing you want is a scale that is wrong because it will not look right then we also need to also change the stone here yeah and increase the scale also to something believable so let's zoom in here and see oh uh -huh. actually that looks good just about three about three looks good oh that looks great so also the paving the ground come in here i think i need man-made not natural so let's use man-made paving i think it's better for it to be darker than it is yeah and then the scale is just make the adjustments in relation to something so that should look right so the other thing that we haven't adjusted yet, yet is this uh coping golden coping and we can just pick it and then reduce the reflection to something below 50 Q up and i think the color is good is good so also the roof you you can grab roof from here so get to roof coloring and then drag drop it in there and that looks great to the scale that you really want so i think the materials are fine this stone can i think i'm happy with akikad stone so even the interiors you can go ahead and color them so for now i'll just color only this uh couch with a fabric color just zoom through and okay maybe this pattern is good hmm. it really looks nice okay now let's uh so the rest you can leave them because you won't even see them oh yes there's also the outside so we need to put some material out here and then we want to save because twin motion can be annoying when it does crash and you lose everything that you have done so be sure to go ahead and save uh so just give it a name and save so once you have it saved we begin to set the camera so we want this as the first camera position so go ahead into the media here and then create an image so when it is created you want to adjust to so that you can see everything in there and update yeah so that is take one and maybe just maybe you can decide to, to zoom in uh just about there and just go in there in more uh we can make it a, produce a 4k and then we can increase the visual field so 
we go in and just increase the visual field something about 72 should be nice and then the rest is you just need to, to adjust yeah something that looks great to you correct the perspective and go ahead and be sure to update because if you don't update you will lose it so that is view one so we zoom in maybe the second view we want to take is a perspective view so let's go down with the navigation uh, options that we have those three units are okay just to give a also a hint of the next unit yeah so something like that so we create it and then we go in for this one we want to make it a little bit more cinematic let's use something about like 50 yeah so since it's a close-up let's uh, take it sideways uh-huh so now what you adjust you go back and update it and right now it's okay so finally we need to also and 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 i i think i'm showing too much of this so uh what you want to do is position your camera such that most of what is in the frame is your house not so much of the uh other things so this looks good so finally let's have just one more uh which is going to be from the hind view so here maybe i want to take it down so if you want to precisely make sure to reduce the speed so so that you can be more precise you're like yeah i think this looks good so here we can create another image and for this image you might want to adjust the lighting the localization such that uh the light it it lights within that's like we talked about it so the light is behind the camera so someone can appreciate the things that are happening in here so that looks good but i'm showing too much of the context maybe i want my people to be in there so when you adjust the camera direction be sure to click on the update button and it is updated so that is it so you have one two three texts so let's render them and see what we get so we go to and we can give them names such that it is easy for us to know which is which so here we will say front here we'll say close view close perspective and then also this one we can name it rare so now when we come and we go to export which is which is here we need to uh check this front and that and then we hit export just choose where to put them obviously and when you have got it just hit render and then you could probably maybe pick your guitar and begin to play as you wait so you can go ahead and see what you have done so thank you all for this series it's been inspiring it's been a lot of work i know but 
Thank you for being on this journey with me.